Thank you for tuning in to No Flag Radio. I'm your host, P. Flipping the world upside down. Today we talking about Kareem Hunt. Now, I put up a tweet about Kareem Hunt. My tweet about Kareem Hunt brought up some things that got me some likes. And also got the white supremacist terrorist commenters mad. That's good. That means that a truth was told. You know that truth angers devils. Truth angers the workaday racist white supremacist terrorist devil out here. But I pointed out that the footage of him engaging with this Abigail Ottinger was from February of this year. Because you notice with the dominant society, they always use time passage as some measure of whether or not white crime is to be considered shameable. Y'all notice that, right? They do it with slavery. They did it with Ben Roethlisberger, the NFL. He's in the NFL. He raped women. Rape. Straight up rape. They do it with Donald Trump, number 45, as they call him. He had 20-something sexual assault claims. They always run with that, it was a long time ago when it comes to white males getting caught up in shit. But watch this. I also point out that this Abigail Ottinger was on a party bus with Kareem. This white supremacist devil female. Before the footage that we saw of him in his apartment lobby, I think it was his birthday was what I read or somebody's birthday. Now, Kareem, that was your first fuck up, brother. Don't, don't, don't party with white women. Period. Partying with white women makes them think they have a pet. It makes them think they have a friend in you. So don't, don't, don't be casual with them. Don't party with them. I know you're young. I know you don't know, Kareem. I know you think that you're special. But look, white women have shown how wild they are when they're comfortable around black men, women, and children. They really get to speaking and doing the things that their slave owner grandmamas did. Their slave owning ass great great grandmamas did. Great 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 grandmamas did. Their devil ass great 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 grandmamas. They really start showing that they are the lowest, most ill mannered, most disrespectful feminine representations on earth. How many times have you niggas got to be shown this? How many generations? Do these white females have to demonstrate it to you in order for you to be at peace with the pack and just accept it? That this is how they get down. This is what white male society sent them to do as a part of white male conquering missions. To wheel her out, the white female, as the low bar, low minded siren woman in the room. And unfortunately, in Western society, it seems like every woman tries to be like and compete with the lowest, dumbest woman in the room on some low bar shit. Whatever the woman is on the dumbest shit, all grades of women, be her top or bottom of the totem pole, seem to try to compete with her for the attention because she going to get all the attention for the stupid shit she doing. So they want to compete with her and try to be like her. But that's another discussion. How many times does this lesson have to be reinforced for you niggas to get it? But like I said, that's the thing with a lot of young niggas. They think, because they got money, that white women will think that they special. And that's all it is. So evidently, after they got off this party bus, back to the party bus, Kareem invites Abigail, wet dog stinking devil ass, to his apartment. He asked how old they were, Abigail and her friends, they were underage. So first off, this white supremacist terrorist devil female lied to the party bus people. You got to be of a certain age to be on the party bus. You got to be of age. I don't know no underage party bus out here. So Abigail and her friends, they traveling the whole world in a bus with alcohol and whatever the fuck else, setting the bus company up for all kind of liability. This hoe and her hooker ass friends are just walking liabilities to everybody. I want y'all to take notes on this, black male athletes and whoever the fuck else. This 
is the stankin' wet dog, racist, white supremacist, terrorist, devil, female calling card globally. All right? They are liabilities to everything they touch because global white supremacy transgenerationally has configured their genes genetically to be unaccountable, unpunished, unlearned, unlessened. They're the most uncorrected group of females on earth. So whenever you see them in their daily activity, rest assured they're acting out of some exasperation of all of that. White supremacist terrorist society put all of that non-optimal being, non-optimal humanity, all that in consideration for others into her. All right? And Abigail Ottinger and her chump-ass friends are products and beneficiaries of that setup. So Kareem finds out that they were liars, lying about their age, and he kicks them out. They get mad, and they start nigga besting. Nigga, 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 nigga. Then the video comes on, and we see him getting touched. Kareem put hands and feet on this lying Neanderthal, racist, white supremacist, terrorist scumbag and her little dogs, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> Straight up, all of them was trying to get this man caught up with a supercharge. I ain't talking about the motor. It, it was going to be influencing the delinquency of a minor, underage drinking. It was going to be underage rape, not sex. Had they had sex, this is the type of bitch that was planning to flip it to rape. And the way I see it, I stand with Kareem. Kareem was protecting himself from a setup. That's how I see it. Now, do I think it was good that he beat her up? Kareem was protecting himself from a setup. They could have been trying to get him killed, anything. So like I said, I stand with Kareem on this. You know, when you try to set people up, when you try to violate people and try to make moves on them under a false pretense, you get beat the fuck up. So, further in my tweet, I address TMZ. And all you celebrity niggas, watch TMZ. Watch they playbook. Watch they playbook. They get footage of something going on that they can hold over your head in a white supremacist audience media, a black boogeyman sniffing for ass audience, and a black boogeyman sniffing for ass media. They get the footage, they sit on it, and then they bring it out whenever somebody within their little offices back in TMZ wakes up one morning and says, damn, I feel like white society is just taking too many L's. And just at random, they release some black boogeyman-esque footage. Some shit they want to have out there to make a black boogeyman at will. ESPN and TMZ, they both do it. They did it with Ray Rice. They did it with Ray Rice, too. The same damn skin. The hold your card move. Like a poker game. So watch them racist white supremacist terrorists at ESPN and them racist white supremacist terrorists at TMZ. This is a hard on for them. TMZ is not a black friend. TMZ is like Vlad. And that black dude that worked for him, he got to be a coon to be sitting up around him doing all that dirt to black men. I feel like his day is coming, too, on the nigga moment side of the game. I feel his day is coming. Forget his name. Something Van Van something. The dude that works for TMZ. The black dude. Not the one with the dreads. The kind of bald nigga. His day is coming for just being around that shit smiling and never really speaking up. All you silent Negroes that work under your massa. That shit gonna come to a fucking end. But like I said, man. TMZ is like Vlad. TMZ is like punk-ass Vlad, punk-ass DJ Vlad, trying to get a nut off on what I like to call Black Ain't Shit TV. Putting this type of imagery out at will to try to always have a black specter, some sort of black phantom in the minds of society. But I want to ask you, how many times did they play that grab them by the pussy video? I wonder if they played that on constant rotation and had that on everybody's 
website. How much of a fair ESPN made out of that shit? And how many times they played that shit? You understand? You see how they play things? So like I said, I got some people who like my comments. I got some people who didn't like the comments. The, the racist, white supremacist trolls. I got a troll talking about, uh, well, you guys are just pulling the race card. I'm like, no, we're just reporting what the fuck happened. This is what happened. Period. And, you know, me and my homeboy, we was talking about this shit yesterday. Like, man, why is this shit coming out now? What's the big deal about this shit? You know, you know they released him from the Chiefs or whatever, but he'll find another team. I'm sure he'll find another team if he's still looking. Not that I give a damn about NFL, period. But I want to get my narrative out that I stand with him on what he had to do. He had to do what he had to do against this animal that was trying to set him up with a supercharge. But... Damn, the Kansas City Chiefs, according to my research, they winning. They winning the AFC East. The Chargers ain't doing shit. The Broncos ain't doing shit. They are the top in their division. So this was, it, it just seemed too perfectly timed. Like, I think somebody back in the office was like, fuck it, Denver's not winning. Fuck it, I'm mad. I'm gonna bring down one of the top players on the team for the Kansas City Chiefs. But that's what I'm thinking about. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. So you know when I'm dropping. Get it, y'all.